Hello, welcome to the next session. Today we will be discussing the next 15 questions for the CBSC Net Psychology Paper 3. So let's start with the first set of questions here. Okay. So in the first set of questions, the first very first question talks about uh, the influence of crystallized in, uh, intelligence and fluid intelligence. Okay. So let's first understand what are the two types of intelligence and how are they different. So fluid intelligence is basically the concept of general intelligence, okay? And we call such people as street smarts, okay? On the other hand, crystallized intelligence is based on your education, your knowledge, and learning, okay? And we call such people as book smarts. So environment that influences education and culture opportunity enhances crystallized intelligence. That's a correct statement. Then crystallized intelligence is developed by stimulating your general intelligence. Okay. So when you are stimulating your general intelligence or fluid intelligence, you are trying to enhance your crystallized intelligence. So that's correct. And this explains why uh, your uh, crystallized intelligence is being enhanced. Okay, so the reason is the correct explanation for assertion, and both the statements are correct. So the correct answer here would be A. The next question is: We use mental shortcuts to solve the problem. That's a correct statement, and we call such a study as heuristics. Okay, problem solving includes thinking. That's again correct because when you are trying to solve problem, you are trying to think. Okay, so both the statements are correct, but both of them are independently correct. They do not. They, uh, this reason does not uh, necessarily gives an explanation to the assertion given here. Okay. The next question is: You have the list of concepts, and you have to match the originator with the concept. Okay. So the correct answer here would be: Personology was given by Murray. Okay, individual psychology was given by Alport. The personal construct of psychology was given by Kelly. And biological trait theory was given by Ising. We'll be talking all these theory in detail when we'll be considering, uh, when we'll be discussing the chapter on personality, okay, and uh, various theories in it. So we'll be covering this topic in detail. So this was a kind of direct question. The next question talks about the characteristics of non-rapid eye movement sleep. Now, before we solve this question, let's first understand what is a non-rapid eye movement. So non-rapid eye movement sleep is also known as the dreamless sleep. It's the deepest part of the sleep where the person is mostly kind of unconscious. So the muscles are totally relaxed. Okay, There is decrease in the heart rate and slow down in the activity of the person. So one and three are the correct options here. Decrease in heart rate and relaxation of the muscle are the correct uh, answers for the non-rapid eye movement sleep characteristics. Okay. Uh, there is also parasympathetic predominance. That means the respiration rate decreases and the related activity decreases. Okay. The next question here is, you have to make, make, match the concept and the given examples for these concepts. Now, it's a very important that you must know the concept in detail so that you can answer the questions. So phoneme is the smallest unit of a language. So you have words like D, A that will all come under phoneme. Morpheme is the smallest set of word that you can make, for example, break. Okay, so you have break as a morphine, you have D and A as the phoneme, then you have syntax. What is syntax? Syntax is a proper grammatical set of rules. So you have grammatical set of rules. Okay, and under that grammatical set of rules, you must say adjective should come before a noun. For example, uh, I'm saying a rose. So I'm trying to add an adjective, red rose, okay? I can't say rose red, okay? So an adjective follows before a noun. So that is a basic grammatical syntax. And syllogism means conclusion of the statements. So when I'm trying to conclude a statement, 
So that's the correct option here. Okay, so these are the correct match. Now this is a very important question. You have a 30 by 30 correlational matrix. Okay, you are trying to represent the correlation among the 30 factors of the NEO PIER scale. Okay, what you are trying to do here is you are trying to understand the variance and you have to see in which factor will show maximum variance. Okay, so as we know, the maximum variance is accounted by principal component analysis. Okay, we'll be covering all these analysis under a uh, separate chapter where we will be talking about factor analysis, principal component analysis, and exploratory factor analysis. Now, these two methods, the maximum likelihood method and principal access method, okay, are the part of exploratory factor analysis. Okay, under exploratory factor analysis, you have two main types that is MLE and PAE, principal access method. Okay and you have maximum likelihood method okay or we call it maximum likelihood estimation and principal access estimation okay so these two fall under exploratory factor analysis and then you have principal component analysis so principal component analysis is the method in which you have the highest account which are high uh, which accounts for highest variance because it explains the initial factors uh, which accounts for all the variance in the variable. Okay, then what happens under maximum likelihood? You are taking into account the goodness of it. Okay, and under uh, the principal axis method, you are trying to choose the variables that are based on the variance such that first factor accounts for the most variance, and then the second factor accounts for the next level of variance. The third will account for the for the next level of variance and so on. Okay, so you have uh, you have to find out the ascending order that is smaller to bigger. So least variance in MLE, then you have more variance in principal axis analysis, and finally the principal component method. Okay, so the correct choice would be A here. The next question is. Pituitary is called the master gland of the body because pituitary secreted by both posterior and inferior pituitary regulates other activities of other gland. So it's called as a master gland because it regulates the activity of all other glands and uh, the hormones are secreted both by the posterior and the anterior pituitary glands which control or regulate the activities of all other glands. Okay. So these were the first set of questions here. Now let's move on to the next questions here. So under these question, the first question is again asked on the Sternberg's theory. We have already uh, done one of the questions on Sternberg theory in the previous uh, set of questions. Okay. So here it's important that we talked about these three components. Now here what we are doing is we are trying to understand the importance of these three components. So the experiential component, okay, talks about creativity. Then you have the contextual component uh, that talks about the practical knowledge. Okay, and finally the componential component that talks about the analytical understanding. Okay, so these are the correct matches for the various components of the Sternberg theory. We'll be covering this theory in a further class where we'll be covering all the theories. Now this question is a very important question because in this question first you have to find out what we are exactly doing here. So what you have is you have two groups okay which are matched on intelligence. So the word matched here is the main word that we need to read okay and each group has 30 subjects. So you have 30 in one group, 30 in another group. In both the groups you are trying to match, uh, you are trying to study the number of employees okay. So you are trying to learn the number of the CVC diagrams that are learned and the trials that the students would be doing. But all these 30 and 30 students are matched on intelligence. Okay, when they are matched on intelligence, you have to find out the degree of freedom for this kind of t-test. Now, when we are talking about this kind of t-test, what is the important thing we are talking about here is, in this question, we are trying to understand the concept of uh, the analysis okay so when we are drawing about this there are 
uh, 13 one and 13 another and this is a kind of matched intelligence okay so you are trying to do a matched pair design and when you are trying to do a matched pair design the degree of freedom is n minus 1 so you have 29 as the correct answer here you will not include the subject as 60 here since it is a matched pair design if it was independent and it was not a matched pair design the case would have been different but since here it is a matched pair design the number of items would be n minus 1 and the correct answer would be 29. The next question talks about the cognitive evolution theory. So under cognitive evolution theory, we try to allocate extrinsic rewards for the behavior that has been already intrinsically rewarded. And when we are trying to do this, we are trying to explain that the level of motivation decreases. So this theory uh, explains the cognitive evaluation concept. Okay, And under cognitive evolution, we say that when we are trying to give an external reward for a behavior, which is already intrinsically rewarded, the level of motivation of a person will decrease. So the level of motivation of the person would decrease so c is the correct answer now the next question is based on the visual pathway theory okay now when we are talking about the visual pathway theory it's very important to understand the question first so you have the orbital frontal cortex and the basal ganglia among the basal ganglia we are talking mainly about the caudate nucleus it is most often uh, the cause for the obsessive compulsive disorders okay and this is structure forms the basis for the obsessive com compulsive disorders okay so that's a correct statement okay but under orbital frontal cortex and cortex nucleus uh, where people have obsessive compulsive disorder you have increased metabolic activity okay the metabolic activity is not reduced but increased so the reason is incorrect so you have assertion as true but the reason is false so c is the correct choice here now next question it's a kind of active question <clears throat> where you are trying to uh, ask about understanding a question so under bulimia nervosa what happens is person has a tendency to eat a lot okay then he feels that he might get uh, he might develop a huge fat so he tries to throw off that fat that can be in form of either vomiting or purging behavior or anything else okay so that's what is bulimia nervosa now read this question you have a 17 year old woman who has been binging on large quantity of food above and beyond okay she's that means she's eating and eating more okay then she engages in purging behavior often three to four times a week and that purging behavior can be uh, any behavior that tends to throw off what you have eaten so it can be in form of vomiting and purging or any other control okay and she feels that she cannot control this purging sensation okay when she is uh, there for a physical examination she shows a very normal weight okay that is because she is intaking a lot and she is throwing it out in an equal amount okay so that is what is uh, that there is where she is trying to maintain the normal weight and that is a classic characteristic of bulimia nervosa a kind of a specific kind of eating disorder so the correct answer is b the next question which of the following are the characteristics of charismatic leader now what do we understand by a charismatic leader a charismatic leader is one who has a personality to attract the followers okay so he has a vision and an articulation he is definitely taking a risk okay and he is sensitive to the need of the followers okay so these are the correct options. His mode, mode is not definitely volatile. He's much at a kind of stable personality. Okay. So three is incorrect. Okay. You have one, two, and three that are correct. So the correct option, one, two, and four that are correct. So the correct option here would be B. Now the next question is again a question on factorial analysis. So you have to find the degree of freedom for the second order interaction. So now uh, before we try to solve this question, let's understand what are factors and what are levels. So I say I have three factors, IQ, age, and gender. Okay, so these are what are known as the factors. 
Okay. Then I have levels in these factors. So I can say there are three levels in IQ: middle, medium IQ, low IQ, and high IQ. Okay. I have young, uh, middle-aged person, and old person. And then I have gender as male and female. Okay. So these are the things that are uh, included in each. So you have three year, three year, and two year. But these are the levels of each factor. Okay. Now you are asked about second order interaction. So first order interaction is a kind of independent interaction. Under the second order interaction, uh, so that's with age with IQ. You have age with gender. That's a kind of first order interaction. Under second order interaction, you have the effect of uh, IQ on age and gender. Okay. So I am taking two parameters, two factors on one side and one factor on the other side. So that would be second order interaction. So when we are trying to find the degree of interaction for second order, what we have to do, we have to find out j minus one, k minus one, and l minus one. There's the number of levels in each. So you have three minus one into three minus one into two minus one. Okay. So the correct answer here would be. 2 into 2 into 1 that's 4 so for this question the degree of interaction for second order the degree of freedom for second order interaction would be 4 okay we'll be discussing a lot more about factorial design in a uh, separate session that's a very important topic and lot of questions are being asked nowadays on factorial design section now the last question is which of the following are classic characteristics of borderline personality disorder So a person suffering from borderline personality disorder would have uh, unstable uh, mood. So there would be effective instability in the mood. There would be impulsive behavior. Okay, the person uh, would be kind of uh, very impulsive to do something, and there would be kind of self mutilation in the behavior. That is rapid shift in the personality of the behavior, and uh, there would be huge reactivity. Uh, to the behavior so he, he can have a personality that is kind of self attacking or a thing that can harm himself so that is what is self mutilation uh, so the correct option can be 1 3 and 4 okay he will not have over concerns about the rules that is incorrect and there would be a huge remorse within himself so lack of remorse is also incorrect so the correct option here is 1 3 and 4 these are the correct options here so with this we cover the next routine set of questions for the psychology examination we will be covering the remaining set of uh, 45 questions in the further classes ahead so stay tuned for that till then have a good day ahead